the question of race restrictions on marriage came before the United States Supreme Court, which refused at first to hear the case, and got it wrong, left standing these kinds of discriminatory laws, and more battling, and more struggle, and more work to achieve a needed change unfolded. And finally, after 19 years from that first court ruling, in 1967, in the best named case ever, this question of race restrictions came again before the United States Supreme Court, which had gotten it wrong. And in Loving versus Virginia, whose 40th anniversary we celebrated last year, finally the United States Supreme Court got it wrong, right, and struck down these restrictions on who's the right and who's the wrong kind of person based on race. And when the United States Supreme Court handed down that ruling, in 1967, in Loving versus Virginia, a decision that we all today look at it and think, of course, 70% of the American people opposed interracial yeah. So when we fight for change in this country, armed with the knowledge that change can come in our system, we also know that it takes work and it takes struggle it takes courageous legislators, it takes courageous governors, it takes courageous leadership at every level, it takes courts willing to do their job despite intimidation, and most importantly, it takes people like us breaking silence and speaking out. And that brings me to the last point I wanted to make, and I'm happy that we have a good size, but also an good enough group that we can actually do Q&A and really talk here and answer questions and like that as advocate and really engage. But the last point I want to come back to is where I began, where I said, if we do our work right, by this time next year, we could see 25% of the country with gay people allowed the freedom to marry that our non-gay brothers and sisters share. What is the work? The work is, first and foremost, defending this victory in California. Everyone here must know people who live in California, many of us grew up in California, all of us have visited California or aspire to. California is one-eighth of our country. 15%, um, 12% of the American people live in California. When California ended marriage discrimination uh, last week, it became the third largest jurisdiction in the world to end exclusion from marriage beating out all but Spain and South Africa, beating out Canada, beating out the Netherlands, Belgium, the newest country to end discrimination in marriage, Norway, beating out the first state in the United States to end exclusion from marriage, Massachusetts. And couples, as we all saw, began marrying last week with joy, with loved ones, with commitment. People like Del Mar and Phyllis Lyon been together 55 years, a long enough engagement, and desperately wanted the legal protections and responsibilities and safety net that come to people who life up and down, including as they contemplate death or illness and want to make sure that their family, their, their surviving spouse is provided for, and desperately wanted, like most married people, the intangibles, the respect the clarity, the immediacy of everyone understanding through that word marriage who you are in relationship to the primary person you're building your life with. Well, Del and Phyllis got married last week. But the opponents of equality are trying to undo that marriage and the thousands we've seen since and the hundreds of thousands or certainly tens of thousands we are going to see over the months and years ahead. On the ballot in November in California, almost certainly will be a measure aimed at cementing discrimination into the state constitution, prohibiting the freedom to marry, and preventing the courts from subjecting that discrimination to normal constitutional review afforded to all other citizens. So the first and most urgent task, the top priority work for all of us in America, gay or non-gay, who care about equality and inclusion in our country's values is to make sure that we defend that victory and that freedom to marry, that fundamental freedom 
and ensure that people are treated equally and that discrimination is not placed in yet another state constitution. Also, again, is work closer to home here in New York. Mm -hmm. New York is one vote away from ending the exclusion from marriage. Last year in 2007, the state assembly, the lower house of the legislature, passed the marriage bill. Governor Patterson, following Governor Spitzer, has pledged to sign that bill when it comes to his death. The state senate has refused to act on the bill under the leadership of the majority leader, Senator Bruno, who today announced his resignation. We go to the polls in November in New York. We elect our assembly, we elect our Senate. New leadership in the Senate means that the vote bill will come to a vote. If it comes to a vote, we can win that. And we can have marriage here in New York as early as early 2009, next year, if we do our work. Right across the Hudson in New Jersey, the state legislature is preparing to vote on a marriage bill. We have the votes. It's only a question of when it comes to a vote. The governor, Governor Cordine, has pledged to sign the bill. He would like to see the passage of that bill after the election in November. Others would like to see it sooner. One way or the other, if we do our work, we can get that bill through. We can defend it. We can have the governor sign it, and we will have marriage in New Jersey. In the other direction, just a little ways away, Connecticut, as in California, couples who have been denied marriage licenses have brought suit. The case is now pending before the state high court, the state Supreme Court, which any day now, or any month now, could issue its ruling, adding Connecticut to the list of states that has ended exclusion from marriage, and others shimmer within reach. If we do our work as lawyers, contributing to the team, helping make arguments, putting arguments not only before the courts of law, but before the court of public opinion, explaining why this is good for families, why families are helped and no one's hurt, refuting the claims of the opposition, the scare and gloom and doom that they always throw up. If we do our work as citizens, voting, taking part in campaigns, and if we do our work as people connect to other people, the most important work, speaking out to the people we know, gay and non-gay, about why this matters and how we need people to take a stand and how we need people to go to websites like equalityforall.com, the California campaign, or prideagenda.org, the New York organization that leads the fight here, or GardenStateEquality.org, the group leading the fight in New Jersey, or LoveMakeTheFamilyCT.org, the group that leads the fight in New Jersey. We do our work as individuals, taking the tools from those websites and having the conversations with our family, our friends, our coworkers that empower them to think it through and move to fairness, then we will be putting our country on the path we need to be. We will be achieving the change that needs to happen and we will be the ones who live to see this discrimination come to an end in a matter of years rather than decades. And then we too will have the satisfaction of knowing that we contributed to the civil rights art of our country and ushering in a generation that like ours today will listen to the kinds of arguments put forward in that case in 1948 or even in Loving versus Virginia in 1967 and just finding it almost unbelievable that people really believe that stuff and try to put barriers in the past of people seeking to care for their loved ones. We have the opportunity to do this, whether as lawyers, as people working with lawyers, or most importantly, as people connected to other people. That's how you make change in America. The change shivers within reach. Let's make it. Thank <laughs> you.